So what they're talking about at the end there is that the pastors kind of through the Glide Memorial Foundation and, and from the different interfaith groups that, that worked in that area created the very first time that any federal anti-poverty funds were used for a group that wasn't primarily a group of color. Um, and they argued that being gay was essentially the same kinds of lack of resources and community support and deserved kind of extra support for the government. And if you've been to San Francisco now, you know that almost all of the homeless resources are in the Tenderloin. And that's because these pastors in the 60s got this big pool of money and were able to create lots of resources that all kind of needed to be in that district. It, I think, presents a big step forward for gay history, particularly gay economic history, that probably most people don't know about, that there was this creation of specific federal funds to help people who were gay because they had specific poverty issues that needed to be addressed. The next video is what happened when, for the last year, I went on what unpolitically correctly is called by the, the queer homeless youth as the underground uh, homo railroad. And it's the common cities that people travel between or find kind of the biggest pockets of, of queer homelessness in. And we took these videos and the history we, and we, a magazine that we created that featured both the writings from, from the 60s and the writings from 2011 in San Francisco and gave it to the youth and then asked them to talk about what issues are the same from the 60s and what issues are kind of new things that you are kind of paying attention to. So I'm wondering if you guys think you know what they will say. <laughs> 